Hey everybody, I'm uh, making a video today about uh, another video that I made. So, my last video I posted was a painting video. Um, I did a painting inspired by John Beckley. Uh, never painted before, I've done a lot of um, like comic book pencil and, and ink stuff. I uh, started doing that when I was a little kid and I've done it my whole life. Never actually tried painting though, at least legitimately on you know canvas with uh, acrylic paints and stuff like that so I did my best um, I posted a video of it um, it's basically the step-by-step -step and my process of getting through that painting all the way up to the end and uh, in the time when I did the painting till now when I've posted the video I actually have painted multiple other ones as well so I kinda wanted to go over those paintings and just show you guys what all I did the different styles that I tried different little tricks I did to them and uh, you know, just showcase those that I that I made in between. Um, I never actually recorded the painting process of those, which is why I'm making this video. And I'm just going to basically showcase each one of those that I did. And uh, hopefully, you guys enjoy. So I'm going to flip this thing around, and I'll showcase what I got. Hang on. All right. So I did this one last night. Um, I kind of wanted to do something for our wall in our living room. That's a longer one. We've got a longer wall. So I made this. Uh, kind of just attempting three solid colored individual pictures that also blend together. We'll get in close on these. I started with kind of like just the the background um, colors and I just kind of faded them together, light blues into some dark blue back into light blue. So this is obviously the blue themed uh, painting or part of the painting. Um, and then I faded into the green over here and tried to give it a different sort of look overall with how the strokes were. So in this one, you see they all went that away. Whereas on this one, it all comes from the center and works its way out in kind of like a circle fashion. And then on this one, and you can't really see it as much, the uh, stroke pattern that I did on it, but this was all done in kind of like a swoop, still in a circle, but I kind of arced it over as I went around. So it's more of like a spiral type thing. Um, anyways, that's how I did the backgrounds. Um, I then hit uh, hit it with some purple with a flat, um, kind of like a little knife, a little painter's knife. Uh, put a little slice of paint on there, and I would just kind of swoop it with the purple. And then I also did it with white. I don't know if it's easy to see right in there. Did some white. Um, camera doesn't really want to pick up all of the stuff on here as well as I'd like. Um, oh, yeah. So to begin, I also I taped off around the entire border of each painting. And then on each one, I did an individual, like, a unique pattern for the painting itself. So this one had a stripe here and a stripe there of tape. So that is clean canvas back there, other than the areas where it has been hit with some paint. Um, on this one here, I just did the single stripe going across the center of it. And then on this guy, I did the, the two vertical stripes um, up and down to make it kind of like a large, medium, and small uh, block style. Um, and I also tried to blend the pictures together in some way or another. So other than the fact that, you know, there is a, a cohesive thing going through the center of all three. Um, on this one here, I tried to bring them all together using this blue strip. So it starts with dark blue, basically just applied a lot of dark blue paint there. And then it fades into light blue here. So I applied a lot of light blue paint here and then I spread the light blue back and then the uh, dark blue um, up into it. And then when I got done blending the two colors together, I then took the brush to this point and I kind of went back over it in a wiggle pattern and it created this little wiggle, which if I can get it to focus on that, you can see it wiggles all the way through that painting and then into this dark blue here. I then stopped at that point. Then I came to this side and I put little dots of the light blue paint in it and then I just did a clean straight stroke across it. Now at the end here where these dots were, I kind of give it, you can almost see the line, I give it a little bit of a little wiggle of paint. And that created kind of a different style of wave, which I thought was neat. Um, let's see, before I actually did that bar though, there, uh, I hit, hit it with some splatter. So I took, because the main theme on this side was the reds, and this side was the blue, I splattered opposites. So this side has, as you can see, the same orange paint, I think it was vermilion, as the uh, other side. And I just splattered that. And then I also used some silver splatter. Um, silver was kind of a, a big theme in this for the little detail stuff. And then on this side, I did the, uh, the light blue or the more neon blue uh, splatter on it. Sort of spread around. Then I did uh, 
this little guy right here. So this is just um, deep purple paint into a uh, blue paint. So it was dark blue in the center and then back into deep purple. I uh, basically blended the paints together, left it sort of thick, and then uh, put little silver dots on the tape on the outer edges, uh, alternating. So they kind of zigzag down and I gave it just one little swoop across and just kind of gave it like a little pattern. You can't see it so much. It was more defined in the center, but of course that's where the um, giant bar went. Uh, I put a piece of sticker stuff in the center there and then peeled it out to give it kind of like a hollow design there in the middle. And then on the ends, I took a plastic bag and I just tapped the wet paint just to give it kind of like a textured look. As far as the center goes, I uh, taped it off, used a little bit of white and uh, lightly kind of hazed it almost so it has like an opaque white look going across the entire thing so you can see through it you can see the blues and the oranges where they kind of splattered together this middle one got blue at this corner and then orange at that corner so it brings the splatters together um, and you can still see them through it and then uh, and then I went over it with a dark blue um, paint and I just basically did these swirls all the way across the whole thing I went one direction and then back the other direction so it was kind of thickened out um, I then took uh, um, th uh, silver and I put a large dot here and let it kind of pool up and then I drug across and I drug through to the other side till I got about halfway and then I wiggled it all the way across to this one and it ends here. And then I did it again, kind of more towards the middle, wanted to make them not be the same and then uh, pulled it all the way across. This time I started with the wiggle and then got straight as I went across. So tried to opposite those. Then I took a paintbrush a thin one, turned it around, and I just started uh, pulling little lines through everything. Kind of spiked it out. And then I went through the painting, did a cross there. Did some uh, lines right there. Let's see. I did some curvy ones right here. Did kind of a three scratch with one going through it the other way there. And then I just did two opposing circle uh, curves and then one straight line through it. Um, lastly... I peeled all the tape, got everything off of it, so those were done to that point. And then at the very end, I took uh, silver paint, clearly, and I swiped across a few times vertically on this one. And then I did some curved angles here. And then I did uh, one curve from here over and then one straight line up. And then I did the same thing with black. I did a couple of uh, straight lines there, and then I did one... Um, curve. It meant to start off of it, but it started right there, which is whatever. And it curved over from the blue down into the green. And then from this one I did opposite. I started at the uh, orange at the bottom and curved up into the green. So opposing is kind of what my theme was. And then lastly, very last thing I did was put uh, some little dots in the white areas and some silver ones in some colored areas. Uh, but the silver ones, I drug a paintbrush through them so that they weren't the same as the blacks. I wanted the black ones to be clean dots, and I wanted the silvers to have kind of a spiky look that matched sort of what that theme was of those two big blobs. Uh, same thing here. I did, uh, I did two little dots. That is my signature that I'm now doing on all my paintings. I just On my third painting, I figured out what I wanted to do for it. First two kind of look goofy, but that one I like, so I'm going to stick with that. Added a couple little lines just for nothingness. There's a few more of the silver dots. And then over here, we got uh, three black dots and then a couple of silver dots. And that's pretty much that one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause this video and I'm going to put up a different painting and I'll let you take a look at that. Hang on. Okay. Whoops. All right, now we're back. Uh, so this one here, it's, it's offset. It's kind of hard for me to get it right. I'll see if I can't lift it up. <clears throat> but these are meant to be right there. So it creates kind of a nice, clean, white outline border that goes across. Uh, if you can't read it, it says Dewey. It's a D, U, E, and Y. Uh, I made this for a buddy of mine. His last name is Dewey. Um, when I when he saw the first painting that I did, he liked the uh, nebula look that I had in the background of it. So um, because of that, I decided, well, I'll make him one like that that's just the nebula. He didn't really care for all the abstract stuff that was on it. So because of that, I made this. Um, as you can see in here, I basically did just a galaxy nebula type look in the background. And then I did the little half circle 
planet looking outlined things which look better when they're lined up obviously I'll try to get this side visible here if I can so that's what that side looks like and it kind of blends in um, that's the old signature the one that I am NOT gonna be sticking with uh, I wasn't very good at it at first it's similar to what I'm doing now but I like the new one a little bit better uh, anyways, so this was the uh, second painting that I did. I did the first one, which was the other video. This is the second painting I did. Um, so these are the only two with that older signature, but it turned out very nice. Like, it's less abstract as what John does or what any of the other paintings that I've done other than this one are. They're much more abstract than this one. But the cleanliness of this I really like, and I think it matches what he wanted really well. I kind of had to pull out of this one and be like, you know what, very, very minimal is enough. And uh, that that's what I ended up doing. And I think it turned out pretty good. So that was the second painting that I did. Hang on, I'll switch it up. All right. Now this one here uh, is just four small squares. So it's hard for me to stand up properly. Um, and it's going to be hard for me to get good lighting because I'm blocking the light. But uh, hopefully this comes through. But basically, uh, it's bordered off. I did a red to um, blue background. The red turned a little more pink when I added some white to it, and then it created obviously a purple in the center. Um, hit it with some. I took. I bought two uh, like plaster scrapers, and then I ground grooves into one of them so that I could get these kind of effects, the the kind of striped claw look going on. Uh, went over it with that. Got some looks out of it. Um, spread a little bit of white in the center, and just kind of blended that out. Um, then I uh, taped it off. Now I didn't intentionally or intend to do what I did with the layering of these at first, but when I was painting them, all I was going to really do was uh, tape them off and then shadow them and then uh, hit it with some other paint. So what I did was taped it and then I went over the whole thing with some gray and, or, and some white, which is hard to tell, but if you look in these areas you can see where the black is some grays and it does swoop all the way through and it helped to fade this to where all the background colors are not as uh, vibrant they're more soft looking so I did that and then when I went to go peel the tape I took one piece off I uh, it might have been I think it was this guy right here and when I took it off or no which one did I take off maybe it was this guy might have been this back one I took that one off and this one was still on, that's right. And so what I did was I took a little black paint and I kind of did a little bit of a fuzziness on the edges right in there. And when I peeled this tape off, it created that, you know, overlaying look to where this one looked like it was going over the top of this one, which I liked. So when I came down to these ones and this piece was gone, um, I hit it a little bit here and I think I hit it a little bit there. Uh, and then I peeled this piece off and then I hit it a little bit there and there to get this one to look overlapped. Uh, when I peeled it off, I then hit this one a little bit on each side and then peeled it and it created that look. This one obviously didn't get anything. You can see the gray and stuff on top of it though from where I went over a little bit. But uh, anyways, so yeah, so that's what I did with that. Um, actually, you know what? I'm actually way wrong on this. I'm looking at it backwards. See, even I don't remember how I did it. Uh, I did gray and white to begin with. That's right. So the whole background was gray and white. And then when I put the tape on, I went over it with the, the red and the blue to create the purple. And that's why when I peeled the tape, the background is the grays and the whites and the, this stuff on top of it is actually foreground, even though it looks like it's background. It's a kind of a trippy optical illusion is what it turned into. And uh, it was not intentional. It was just kind of having fun and experimenting. And then that's what I ended up getting. And I learned a lot from this one, um, which is pretty cool. Um, some of the other details I did while the tape was still on, I hit it with some very dark blue, some silver, um, just some squigglies that kind of randomly go around. Um, and then once I peeled all the tape, I then went over it with some splatter. We got red and blue, which is the theme colors. And then I did white splatter over the top of it as well. And then that was the first one I had with a signature. So... That is that one, very, very small one. That one was quick. I mean, it maybe took me a couple hours to do, and I, I just kind of took my time figuring out what I wanted, but I, I really knocked this one out relatively quick. So, uh, yeah, but it was a fun, it was a fun, easy one. I think that anybody wanting to try could do something like this 
no problem and just start pumping them out and you could i mean if you wanted to sell them you probably could because that honestly that looks like something that someone might buy you know and it was totally unintentional but turned out very nice so i've got one more to show you guys give me one sec okay so this is the uh last one i did actually no the first one i showed was the last one i did i did this one right before um and this is my favorite one out of all of them. This one took me the most time, and it also is the one where I invested the most energy into really attempting to make creative things, not just throwing shit at it and hoping that it turned out the way I wanted, but legitimately, you know, assessing what I was doing and seeing like, well, if I were to do that, what's it gonna do to the painting? What's gonna be revealed? And actually doing a little research on it as I looked at the painting and to what would happen from doing certain things. So uh, first thing I did was I went over it with color. Um, hit orange, purples, blues, and greens. And then I brought some of the, I put a little dark blue there, put a little dark green there, brought a little purple down to the bottom, which ended up getting covered. So you can't really see that as well. Um, so I created just kind of a good background. I then went over that background with a plastic bag, which gave me these cool little like flower effects almost unintentional flowers but that ended up being what they kind of look like in the background and they're neat to see through it um, I then also went over it with my little um, spackle spreader that I had cut and I created like the, the little line things going through there um, next I taped it off so with these these are actually label stickers that you would do for like a gift um, we have a boatload of them because of Christmas right now so I basically just stacked them. I started at the bottom corner and uh, my goal was to keep them close and tight and then have them spread out the further away from the from the from that corner that they got. So you can see that those are all tight together, a little bit bigger gap here, a little bit bigger gap, and then an even bigger gap. And they staggered in a staircase pattern, even though they also went out to here. So big gap, medium gap, small gap, tiny gap. And then they are all gapped um, one tape width apart from the edge so that they're perfectly equal around that entire corner and centered on it. Um, I then went uh, over these with a cut piece of tape. So I cut a full width length or full width um, tape roll like this and I cut it in half and then I put strips down them vertically. And then I went over that with full length doing the uh, diagonals across. Also keeping them close and then getting slowly spread further apart between each strip. So kind of Kept the same theme as that one. Um, I went over it with black and, and white and then just made a lot of black and gray areas. Um, there's some that are darker than others, like up in this corner here. Down in that corner there. And then in the center, there's some dark spots here. You can see the, the real black area that swooped across. It got covered with other stuff, but um, there's just some cool black areas. I tried to put little dots of black on there and then just give them a couple little swipes so they didn't actually blend, but they created more contrasting little spots that went through it. Um, let's see what I do. Then I peeled the tape, got all the stickers off and everything. I uh, went over here, I taped these areas off. So I created uh, these little strips. That is much thicker paint. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but that was just thick paint. I put a little blob on the edge where the tape was for the border and then I put silver here and then white there and then I just kind of pulled them um, with a knife and then just kind of drug them into where they blended into one same thing on this one I think you can see it better here there you go you can see that where the knife blended it a little bit better there's a silver down into the white and then same thing with this guy here the black blended down silver and then blended into pure white so I did those, um, and then when I was done doing the actual stripes, I then took, uh, sorry about the camera, I keep forgetting to focus it. Uh, I took dark blue, and I just did droplets into them, and then I let them kind of open up and bleed and get as large as they wanted to be. Some of them misshapen them, or got into misshape. Some of them aren't the right shape. <laughs> Man, I suck at this shit. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so they're not perfect, but... They're exactly what I want because they're unique. You know, they're individual. And uh, they ended up doing exactly what I'd like from the painting. I thought that they turned out really nice. Except for those two that almost bled together. But, uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. So then um, afterwards, I then taped uh, this area here. 
I taped off there. Oh, I'm sorry. I splattered it with the green and the orange. Now, while this was taped up, I made sure that I didn't touch that area. So if you look at this area, just this top corner, from basically from here up, you'll see that there's very minimal splatter. It's essentially just overspray from this side, but there really is not a whole lot of splatter in the background. So the background is clean there. I think that that's a really nice contrast having the cleanliness of the back to where it kind of pops and shows through to the chaos of what's going on over here. And basically there's oranges and greens, which are the theme main deep color themes for the corner here. Um, and I splattered first, then I taped over them. Uh, and I took the orange paint and I did opaque, very thin layers of the paint over the squares. And then I did kind of like a shaded, uh, faded dark color um, rub around the outside of the tape. Same thing for down here. I did an opaque green in this area and then the same black kind of shadow outline of where the tape was. Peeled those off. And at the same time, I had a triangle in the center that I did um, the shading in the center with. Afterwards, I then taped off this corner here, going up and over, and then I did a white shadow across and a white shadow up, and then I taped over that afterwards and then hard-lined just this edge with black again so that the white shadow, if the camera will pick it up, actually goes up into the triangle, goes over the triangle here, and then up into it, and then through it, and then across. So it looks like that square is actually going through the triangle which was cool in my opinion. Anyways, I did that. I got uh, some squigglies in here for this corner. Um, got some stuff up in the center here where I just kind of did a little pull and then did some little dot textures in that area. Some more pulls going through here for that background spot. Um, you know, basically just simple stuff. I faded the edges in. So this one has a dark edge that fades out. And then this top corner up here has the same thing. Dark edge that fades down. I then peeled the tape from the outside, took the blue that we were using, the light blue, hit it a couple times, hit it a couple times with black, a couple more across the way, and then I did uh, the dot here, single dot there, and then the three dots there. I'll give you guys a full view. So that is the whole thing. But yeah, so hang on. Yeah, so I had, a, I had a good time doing that stuff. I don't know where my camera's at. There it is. Um, I had a good time doing it. I'm definitely going to paint more. I've got a lot more canvas and a lot more paint, so I'm going to keep at it, and uh, I've got cool ideas. I think further on, I'm going to do less of the abstract completely, and I'd like to actually paint uh, an image that's maybe an ab abstract version of something, but it's something that you can recognize, and then do the abstract cool shit over the top of that. Um, but that's what I'm going to try next, so we'll see how it goes. Um, until then, you know, hopefully I can record some more of the actual painting process and then I'll post a video of, of me doing it. But this is what I made in between then. So hopefully you guys like it and uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye.